Why has no one referred to like TikTok fanatics as tick heads? Did you see the video of Nancy? I sent you that video where she's like, TikTok, tic tac toe. Ah! Idiot. Nana. Nana, back to the asylum for you. Um, it's time to forcibly put everyone over 65 in a nursing home that's in politics. That's the real insurrection we need is we just need nurses and like very kind aides to politely guide them to a walker and like load them in a very plush van and take them to a gorgeous nursing home. Mitch McConnell (laughs) put him in the earth. I just think it's like, they're like, we have knitting classes here. We have like music night. Like they could be like, we will play. We'll do like, We'll do an election here. We can play, act like we're still doing our jobs, but not really do them. We can do like Model UN. Yeah. For old, and like, for seniors. you can run for like class president. And like, you guys can talk amongst yourselves because you clearly love to do that. But like, you're going to do it. Yeah. And you can insider trade from. You can still. The no one's going to your... take away your ability to sell and buy stocks. Yeah. You can. You can. You can play the stock market from your plush nursery nursing home. Yeah. And like still make a lot of money. They're like, we will lock you in your room at night. We don't want you wandering we'll anywhere. Take away your shoelaces. Mm-hmm. But, but you can you get three hot meals a day. And you'll get the heads up. Yeah. That sounds like a reasonable yeah. um, compromise. I'm just I, I'm continue to be tickled by the shots of Southwest flights taking off over James and Allie's house. The editors are really cruel. But it also is like that house's backyard really puts me in such a bad head space. No. The aesthetics of that house specifically. It's awful. That whole house is like a popcorn ceiling. Yeah. It's like if a popcorn ceiling bred with like a super popcorn ceiling and a vertical blind and they had like a sick menage and then the <laughs> original popcorn ceiling gave birth to like a super popcorn rancher. And then you just get this house. They're playing with Graham, Hippie. Hippie is the grossest name for a dog. It's sick and wrong. Am I wrong? No, I don't like it. It's also just not his name. There's don't something to, about him. Don't try to erase Raquel. I'm sick of Raquel erasure. I wrote poor Anne. Tom comes home from Tahoe. And Anne goes... Oh my god, I didn't expect you to walk in while I was dressed up to go see Barbie. <laughs> you and didn't? Like why were you then why are you here with cameras rolling? Because I didn't think you'd see me like this. He <laughs> and then, and then Tom is completely uninterested and he goes, It's great. And he so goes, great. He goes, Is is Ariana here? And she's like, Yeah, she's upstairs. Yeah, she's upstairs, like depressed on the internet. <laughs> and then Ariana goes <laughs> It's like this is me day to day. Just like making shopping carts of things i did love ariana here's tom upstairs and she goes it's like the wicked wis- witch of the west blowing in <laughs> and then he talks to Anne, and she's like how is tahoe and he's like it was good it was honestly like really healing and like there were some you know we had some tense moments but like all in all i think it was a good trip so i'm gonna go out now go upstairs and start journaling it's like you're sick and she goes great i'm gonna go cry in my car I'm obsessed with, I didn't think you were coming here. There's a fucking camera crew in the living room. You have a call time. You work on a show. Oh, I didn't think you were coming. You were going to. Nip slip. (laughs) It's like, I didn't see, didn't think you'd see me here. I didn't think you'd see me. I know where to go, but Barbie. Yeah, she goes, she goes, this little thing. Yeah, she goes, "Mm, (laughs) it's windy in here, no? Because I'm not wearing any underwear under this little tube dress industry plant and yeah i'm not buying what you're selling 45 year old <laughs> 50 year old and she's literally like 45 not that that's old but like no good for her you gotta b- you know what breaking into the biz <laughs> at 45 is yeah. an admirable thing to do but don't fucking sell me that i didn't see you there Ooh, shit i didn't see you over you there fucking get a call sheet in your yeah. email get out of here get the fuck out of here she goes over to villa rosa dressed in pink 
Lisa goes, oh, that's a perfect outfit for this gorgeous afternoon. Come on in. And she goes, yeah, I wore it for you. <laughs> um, Lisa has brand new pink couches in the living room. And I kind of, they look really like plush. They do, but they look tacky. They're really tacky, but they also look like comfy kind of. Oh, no, I know. I would, the fabric was looking good to me. I would sleep on those couches, but. But I was like, Nana popped off. Nana spent, what, 20K on couches. Yeah. She goes, Scandal's been a good year. Two sofas, please. <laughs> donut, her dog is barely sentient. She goes, I'm doing donut training, if you can see. And she, Sheena goes, oh, my God, this is like the cutest dog I've ever seen. <laughs> um, she goes, how is Tahoe, darling? And she goes, I cried so much, my eyelashes dried out. I think it's just Sheena with, like, crispy, dry eyelashes. Sheena basically is like, I'm feeling very suffocated under the supernova of Ariana's fame. She's being, she's in like the, she's getting blinded by the, the eclipse. Sheena is having truly a very LA experience, which is you really want something so, so bad. And then a friend of yours gets it. And then you're like, okay, I'm gonna fucking cut myself, but I'm also going to be so happy for you. And that's Sheena with Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, or like seeing someone you know on a billboard. Mm -hmm. Sheena's like, I was uh, really excited to be potentially asked for Dancing with the Stars, and I started taking dancing lessons. Is that how it works? You just think... She was... She was trying to like law of attraction a Dancing with the Stars offer. She was early in the year. I read the secret, and when Scannabel hit, I thought, well, this and this is not what she said. But she goes, well, maybe I should just like will it into existence. So I started taking up dancing classes back at the Hollywood Dance Academy, and lo and behold, Ariana got it. She was. It's kind of crazy seeing her go from like my backup dancer to Dancing with the Stars, and I was like, Ooh, you better turn down the volume on that. And when she finally says the dance, Lisa goes. Oh my god. She goes, When I did Dancing with the Stars, I remember Sheena, you saying, That's what I want to do. And I go, Lisa, you little bitch. You are a fucking cunt for that. Um, I also love Sheena was like, picked up Ariana's new man from the airport, and that's how she found out. Yeah, he was like, Yeah, we're like, we're really excited for the big announcement today. And Sheena goes, What announcement? And he goes, Dancing with the Stars. And she goes, Ah. I would be upset. If you drove all the way to, oh, I guess she's in the marina, but still, if you drive all the way to LAX to pick up your best friend's like rebound man, that's a good friend, by the way. That is actually a very nice thing to do. I can't believe I Why the fuck? Again, I'm like, can you not get an Uber? I can't believe I saw Dan, that's his name, (laughs) like an hour before I said my vows. (laughs) I still can't believe that. Yeah, that was fucking crazy. Like he was one of the, he was like the last person outside of who was at my wedding that I saw in this earth. That was wild. The, Ariana pulling up. Hey, wasn't I invited her? <laughs> <laughs> what? What if Ariana and Dan came to your beautiful I, wedding? Day? I was like, come to the like afterward. Where people were just gonna yeah. Hang in. I mean, what? I wasn't gonna be like. Bye. Yeah. Goodbye. I had to at least offer it, right? I guess. Logan? Well, I mean, it's very nice to offer it. I It just felt like, again, I relate to Sheena being a people pleaser, but like, she, I knew she wasn't going to come. Yeah. I just felt like it was like the polite thing to be like, yeah, come by later. Mm-hmm. But she was like, no, I'm really famous. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually will not be doing that. No. Um, but yeah, that is a, she's a good friend. And then Lisa goes, Sheena. She goes, Sheena. Sheena, it's, Okay, I think to tell Ariana that your feelings are hurt. What's wrong with that? And I went, oh, you producer. Uh, she got her little producer cap goes, on. Shouldn't you, if it's a real friend, be able to tell them everything you think, even if it's not palatable? Hmm? I go, Lisa. Lisa, don't do this to fucking Chishu. Sheena's such a people pleaser. I know. I, I like truly feel her. Like I, I'm like You and Sheena are one. Sheena and <laughs> Keener. Keener Keener are <laughs> truly twins. You we, guys are really like connected. I get her. 
I get her too. And I get you even. It's like watching Sheena makes me understand you even more. And I mean that in like a very positive way. No, I know. You learn about your friends. And I've always loved Sheena. Sheena's always been one of the goats for me. She's a star. She's a fucking star. Just I wrote, like I am. That's Hollywood, baby. When it is. She had that DWTS. But I would say to her, don't give up on your dreams. No. I think it can happen for her. That's all I want to do. Is it? She'll, she'll be on it next year. Yeah, I'm sure. But I love that she just took lessons. <laughs> Ballroom dancing lessons. God, but it's so like... It, it annoys me. It does annoy me at the same time when they're all like... Ariana, like, she's getting too big for her britches. Like, this is just, like, I'm so tired of talking about this, blah, blah. But I'm like, you guys all guzzled. You sucked the teat out of this scandal. Like, all of them. Oh, yeah, you all benefited. Milked. You all don't pretend that, like, you weren't scrambling to get your piece of the pie when this is all happening. Like, and all of them, I think on the, there was a clip Raquel went rogue. On, she posted a super cut of them saying, like, at the after show being like, Wonder how many more episodes we're going to get of her just bringing up Sandoval one more time. And it, and then she cut to them on their podcast. Oh, yeah. They all talked about it. Yeah. So, like, I do I do get a little annoyed where I'm, like, I guess in defense of Ariana, where I'm, like, you guys are all benefiting from her betrayal. They got a piece of the action. So, don't, don't act like you're not. But at the same time, just in in the universe of Vanderpump Rules specifically... That has to hurt so much oh, yeah. to see someone become the face of this thing and the yeah, and be able to like have potential opportunities at that same time, even as we were talking last week, I was like, what really like beyond all this, once the dust truly settles down, like dancing with the stars is over, obviously, but like, Chicago's over. It's kind of like, okay, then what? Like, are is it a does Ariana have like a real longevity? I honestly think she kind of does. Yeah. I think she's very relatable and I think people see her. She's like a good like she's very like she a has, good avatar to project. Yeah, and she has something special. There's something about her there that people really about her. and like you feel it like I felt it when I'm when I've been near her. Yeah. She has like a quality that's like very appealing and like magnetic. So I do think she has staying power. I think she's not as polarizing as like someone like Lala or even Sheener. So I think you know what I mean? I get that. To just to ascend be and be able to yeah evolve past a life of just being like Vanderpump rules centric. This is the Ben and Joe's water. <laughs> Worm juice. Yeah, thank you. Is uh, tough. Because She's, I don't think the other people on the show have that opportunity yet. I think it's a real choice you have to make where you're like, I never thought I would be even proxy to this kind of fame. I'm going to just enjoy it and mm -hmm. maybe do something cool like that I've always wanted to that's kind of out there. Like, that's what I would do. I'd be like, this might not last forever for me, but like I would try to leverage it into some way like I'd fund a movie like i would get like a movie ground you know what i mean like just mm -hmm. do something and then you can carve out your own little niche i think lala and sheena are both sheena are both people that feel like they're stars and they they are i think they are to a degree mm -hmm. um but i think they feel like they've because i don't think ariana really set out to be like famous i think she wanted to be successful but not in the same way that lala and sheena want to be famous do you know what i mean yeah. i think ariana wanted to have like she wanted to dance maybe wanted to act and wanted to probably have like stability and financial security and now she's like gotten some she's gotten something she couldn't even like fathom and i think sheena and lala have always just wanted to be like famous you know so there's a difference and i think ariana is slipping into it seamlessly because people maybe sense that that she didn't want this and she just kind of 
there's not as much of a desperation there. Yeah. And try. There's not like that try hard energy. Yeah. And I'm not look. And I love, sh- I love Shishu. Like she's my sis. And I love, I do think Lala is really funny, but like I wouldn't, I would say Ariana doesn't have the same level of like need to be the center of attention that those two have. Yeah. She always seemed very ambivalent about both the show and whatever her life was going to be beyond the show. And she, um, you know, in the final Scandaval episode, like she, and who knows if she was just like saying this for like good TV, but she did say like, I would have left the show for you, Tom. Like I would have gone and you know what I mean? I think she, or like if we broke up, I was going to just leave the show. And go yeah. To New York. Or like I, if she was basically like, I would have gone anywhere for you. Like, mm-hmm. so I feel like she was kind of like, chill. she's like, I got a good thing going and maybe yeah. I'll be with this guy and we'll just like, figure it out people like when people who are really ambitious get successful people hate it Mm -hmm. and when people get accidentally famous people love them and then they find a reason to hate them but their initial people love them but then all their friends hate them yeah (laughs) so you can either you can have one or you can have the other which do you choose like that guy the jury duty guy like probably an industry plant but like that guy ronald or whatever he got like accidentally famous and people love him. And now he's like showing up to, he's at everything now. Mm -hmm. So it's like that kind of thing where someone like Sheena, who is like, who's been like, I'm going to be like a pop star. Yeah. And she was hawking interviews after she fucked John Mayer. Like she's just, that is, that's not appealing to most people. It's to us. We're like, Oh, I love it. I eat it up. Fucking horse feed for me. Like I'm like, (laughs) It's the trough. It is. Lala and Ariana go to get coffee. And then they just like walk up and down Melrose. They like walk in one direction and then cross a street and walk in another direction. I was like, this cursed walk that you're doing, like, I know exactly (sighs) where you are and like where you're going. And you're walking around on the hot streets of Melrose in circles. I saw when they were near that Chipotle in La Brea, which I remember one time I drove by you. And I love that Chipotle. No, you were filming something with Graydon. Oh, yeah. We did a little Chipotle thing. You were, you were shouting <laughs> at him across. And I didn't see him, but I saw you and I went, hey. <laughs> it's a star is born at that Chipotle every day. That was my star turn. But, but I, I, s- I frequent that Chipotle. That's my spot. I've never been there. It's good. But I... No, like I, I drive down La Brea constantly because so, I live off it. So I was like, Ooh, I got the. I got really bad chill for this like aimless walk. I was like, please go somewhere. Where do you know where that coffee spot is? It's like on Melrose past La Brea, like heading east, I think. Near that like chateau near... looking apartment building. Like on the way to Hancock Park. It's between La Brea and Highland on Melrose, I think, to the right. It's, like, a place where I don't understand how you could even go there because, like, where do you even park kind of place. It's, like, you know those places where you're, like, I'd love to check that out, but, like, I need to just go there on foot because I'll never be able to park around there. We've reached that level of – well, I know they do this a lot on Housewives, but where we hear their orders. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, I don't really care. But I also care. Deeply. I know. I kind of was like, what's this like coconut latte situation? Um, or roasted something or the other. Lala's basically like Ariana. Sheena's a really good friend to you. And when she was getting ripped apart for posing in that photo with Sandoval, you could have taken to Instagram and been like, guys, enough. Yeah. And she was like, why would I do that? She's like, I'm not going to say anything that can be turned into a headline. And I was like, oof. You are coming off badly in this scene, my Why? girl. But she ends up doing it. So it was like, that seems like a lot of drama for really nothing because she did say that. And then I remembered like, oh yeah, after this happened, like she did say something. I feel like they're just, they have no drama to mine really this season because the two people at the fucking center of the drama refuse. They will not interact. There's no way to get them to interact with each other. So they're left. And the with, other one's in in Arizona. And the other one's in Arizona about to like start a podcast, which by the way, I appreciate someone going rogue, but I don't appreciate the rogue nature of putting out like 
episodes not on a regular release schedule. She needs to get her shit together. You about can't it. just like put an ep. You can't just like do that. That's not how it works. You need to at least commit. Like also, your episodes are like fifteen minutes long. You have to at least do it once a week. I'm Miss- about. I'm losing my patience with Rogue. Rogue Levis needs to maybe sit down and like for next season if there's a season two <laughs> i really feel like there now won't be because i think i'm getting the sense that like she doesn't even enjoy really going rogue that as much as she thought she would and no, the producers wants- are like you need to go rogue again she's like i don't really want to and they're like we're gonna facetime you and you're gonna go rogue because even the, the audio cool. quality the audio the was like audio- did you film this in like a hallway she literally just was talking like on speakerphone and they're putting it through like ai i was like girl you, can you just get so a right. fucking microphone like it's not that hard to make a podcast she conference called in this pod episode and she also like She's like, I don't want to go rogue. I want to go back and get into kinesiology. I was like, okay. I was like, okay, then do that. Then do that and loot me out. And if you're not going to go rogue, get out of my life. I know she got, she's been going less. She's going rogue in the wrong ways now, which is not having a regular posting schedule and posting like three minute episodes. She literally needs us as her rogue mentors. She's going to beat us to the hello, goodbye punch because the episodes get shorter and shorter and the, the ads get longer and longer yeah it's it's a little junky it feels a little like now it feels like spam <laughs> it's spam. It's like one of those like weird spam games where like you're like look what happened to this poor woman and she's like being <laughs> cheated on and then she goes bald and like is out in the cold have you seen those oh the like games that yeah. you can have and play with an but, avatar but they feel like very junky spam games yeah um she needs to get her fucking shit together Miss Rogue needs to stay. I don't want you to go into kinesiology. I, I want need you, you to go rogue. I need you to go rogue. You promised us. You, you promised, promised us rogue. Promised us rogue. And it's tepid at best. Yeah, and it's you're not fucking cutting it. You're putting. You're dipping one toe into the rogue mother lake, and I need you to go full body submersion. She's about twenty five percent rogue right now. When we started at a cool one hundo, n- so <laughs> I'm gonna need you to ramp it the fuck up, sister. Um. <laughs> Lala, <laughs> this kind of made me laugh. She goes, "As far as I know, all I see is Ariana doing is just scrolling." <laughs> she goes, "So she could easily post th- this statement about Gina." I was like, "Oh my god, damn!" She's on social media a lot, scrolling and liking things. I was like, "Oh fuck!" I don't want Lala to know what I do on socials. <laughs> She read she literally Miss Glad said, to Phil. She really <laughs> said scrolling. <laughs> oh my god. I'm here though for Lala coming for people. I'm like, someone has to do yeah. it. If imagine if Lala was just truly giving as little as Katie, this season would just be the season would literally just be people sitting on the floor. Katie gave a little this episode. A little, but like unintentionally. We'll get there. The girls get a drink later. Wait, and- did you see the Valley trailer? Mm-mm. Oh, because you're watching on Peacock. Yeah. I was watching last night and the Valley has released like new trailers. I think they realized like the first one really had flop vibes. So they've like gone back and in the wake of Jackson and Brittany's relationship troubles or like making us know a storm is brewing. And now I'm like, obviously in. Well, it they, starts next week, by they, the way. They picked up and started filming. When oh they, again yeah when they well they knew they needed to ja- smart of jacks but the girls go Dodie to- goes do- what are you oh tra- in the on? in the valley in the valley oh oh yeah <laughs> what <laughs> oh yeah oh oh yeah <laughs> i don't know Dodie says what Dodie goes she goes in this concrete, she goes in the concrete jungle of LA. She calls LA a concrete jungle. <laughs> For some reason, New York. It kills me to have Dodie being like, in the concrete jungle of LA. That's fine when you're in your twenties and thirties, but I'm forty. I'm forty nine. I need to be in the back. But when it starts off, there's something about that voiceover that I'm just like, I cry. How old is she? She's like 40, 41. The concrete jungle. <laughs> she goes, 
the concrete jungle of Los Angeles. That's literally just like the most everyone knows. That's like it's a song. <laughs> concrete jungle <laughs> with LA. Let's hear it for LA. Concrete jungle with dreams of me. <laughs> she goes in the concrete jungle. <laughs> And I'm like, girl, you live you in you live so in dumb. <laughs> you live in a separate city. It's like a strip mall jungle. It's not. A, no one calls it the jungle. No, a concrete jungle is Manhattan. In the concrete jungle. In the of concrete LA. jungle of LA. That's for your twenties and thirties. Now that I'm forty nine, I need to be in the valley. We need Dodie back on Vanderbump Rules. Dodie is like succumbing to like. I'm 40 Nana energy. <laughs> like she, she's, and I'm like, I feel for her. I mean, I have no idea what the Valley holds in store, but from what I'm seeing of like her journey is like, it's not good. She's with this like podcast guy that she does a podcast with. And she's like getting her eggs like tested to like embark on like a fertility journey. And I'm just like, girl, like with love and light, just take up smoking again and like cause drama. <laughs> like you're good at Get that. Get addicted to Adderall you again. You need to like be like in your prime, like a little mentally ill, causing drama and like Did she quit smoking? Yeah, she quit smoking. Uh, she's she's one of the rare people who are just better with a cig in their mouth. They're better just sucking down a pack of cigs a day. <laughs> I could smoke more. You can st- <laughs> you can stand to smoke more. I can stand to smoke a few more. <laughs> I'm down to like four a day. That's good. Only at night. That's good. But I'm never giving that up. <laughs> to pry it from your cold dead fingers. You will, I, my night smoking is my true thing. I look forward to. It's all a respite. Day. It's a respite. I'm a, I'm in the throes battling a diet coke addiction right now. That's what I've turned to. I'm on. I started Cause you, out because you stopped smoking. I think just because like I don't have like a vice anymore. Like I don't drink, I don't smoke, and I don't, I don't really take other drugs unless it's like a psychedelic at a dead show. So like, m- I'm pretty limited. Like I can shop, but like that's another thing too. The cig, it's like my little sexy little like. It's a thrill. sexy little secret. It is, and it's like and smoking here. I just feel ashamed. I feel like I'm polluting everyone's space, and like I shame smoke, and that doesn't feel sexy and cool. I've gotten over that fast, where I'm like, "Fuck you!" Like I want, I want to lock eyes. You're with in you. your Janine Garofalo, yeah, defiant like, smoking era. I'm like, lock eyes with me and behold, as I smoke this. You're like, literally, I will blow smoke in your eyes. I will literally blow it down your mouth. I you love know? that. Because it's like, don't look at me. All I really have. Because you're doing fucking ketamine. Yeah. All I have really is like shopping every once in a while. But like my sexy little treat, like a bad girl treat, you know, you need like to harm your body a little bit. A little fro Is a Diet Coke. And like I started out with one Diet Coke mini a day because when the afternoon hits, like nothing's better than an ice cold can. 3 p.m. Diet Coke. Yeah, 3 to 4 p.m. But now... I'm up to two minis a day. And I was like, the addiction is taken away. I had a Diet Coke before I came in here. I have one mini left in the fridge and I'm like, this is a fucking crisis. Speaking of which, oh, I sent you that tweet. I know, the Billie Eilish. Let's, let's like, agree that her outfit was bad. Just like, I don't, I'm, I don't, don't know if you should, like very few times are like separates a good choice for a very formal yeah. event. That's what I'm going to say about that. Um, thank God though we got a glimpse of Christina Kelly. She's returned I from she's Venice. Back, baby. <laughs> the, <laughs> the girls, the girlies, get a drink at yet another place that kind of looks like Bottega Louis. And it's girls' night in WeHo on a gr- roof. Girls' night in WeHo, and Christina Kelly has ventured over from Venice. She sits down, old sourpuss Kelly, and Sheena comes in with, like, stressful... You know when Sheena comes in, like, she's stressed, and yeah. Christina goes, you look cute. And I was like, that fucking bitch. She's left her baby at home. She's like, I'm in a mom bubble. I need some gossip. Tell me all the things that are happening. I was like, oh, my God, I forgot she had... She, she pr- had a kid. She spawned. She bred. Yeah. She got bred. I <laughs> Who's her husband? 
the mystery. He, sh- I literally see my breath when she's on my screen. She chills me to the core. I want, I don't want her to even like perceive me Mm-mm. because then there's, there's a, a chance that she could say something to destroy me and I can't take it. You look cute. Oh, look at you. You look cute. It's very, you okay, Claude? I hate it. Um, they swap tails and, uh, when they order, they all order and <laughs> Katie's like, what does she say? What's her, what's her order? With her like, order? It's like some sushi <laughs> order. I don't know. It just made me laugh. When she was like, what did she get? She got like a, yeah, she got like white wine or something. Like, I don't remember. Which I knew. Yeah. They all get like row and then they're eating and they start talking about Tom Sandoval and Sheena's like difficult time processing the end of their relationship and katie gets fucking activated she goes i don't want to talk about that fucking trash bag i'm gonna talk about that she goes i'm seriously i'm gonna jump off this roof if we keep talking and i go no skylight don't do it don't do it (laughs) she goes she basically is like well first katie goes there's still stories about jacks running around the town and i was like there's they're like seeding cross it in. They're cross promo in. vertical integration, baby. There, if there's one thing we can count on. It's Jax's volcano dick making its way around town. I love, she goes, running. There's still, st- I still hear stories about Jack running all around the town. <laughs> no empathy, no <laughs> compassion. I she basically a- says that she always thought Sandoval. I think Katie. Katie did, hates Sandoval. She's I always think she had always his number. Always has. Yeah. And she, but she thinks he's the, he poisoned the well with Tom. And her, honey, that I'm well. Like, no, I. She's like he, she basically. You turned, made your well in like a sewage tank that was poisoned <laughs> from the start. But like he certainly didn't help. But like, I don't think your relationship could have been saved, Sandoval or no Sandoval. No, not even a priest. I would even actually argue could, that the relationship was better because of Sandoval because it it out allowed there to be like a little bit of tension, and like more excitement rather than just like fighting all the time she goes she starts crying and she's like i don't want to talk about this man i've always never liked him (laughs) she turned my ex-husband against me i'm like girl no he he was always against you you. he was never for you not once you didn't need sandoval's help i really would love a, a bottle episode that follows like katie for half of it like just reflecting on her relationship with Schwartz now that they're like out of it. And then Schwartz reflecting on his relationship with Katie, because like hearing their concept of like what that relationship was is fascinating. Um, Sheena goes, fine then I'll tell you something really fun. I fucked the bartender. (laughs) What? And she goes, yeah. In 2006, I was gagged by that. That's kind of, I was a little shocked by that because Sheena's like, she's always, she's like kind of led with sex in quotes, her whole career on the show, her tenure on the show, but she's never been like so explicit like that. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Like she's never been like. She's always a little more demure, but this time Shishu got up to some shenanigans. I fucked that motherfucker right over there. I fucked the bartender. 06. Oh my God. In 06. As she said. Oh, 06 was my best year here. Oh, 06, Sheena. That's before my time even yeah. in LA. Imagine the eyeliner and the <laughs> eyeshadow. <laughs> Imagine the bangs. Oh, yeah, she had bangs, right? I think so, because by the time Vanderpump Rules was starting, her haircut was like when you grow out like really blunt bangs, they were like here. So oh, 06, Sheena might have been like full-fledged like bangs and like a hard eyeliner. Fucking just like Sucking and fucking her way through Hollywood. Was she already here? Or she came down from Azusa on a little night out. (laughs) Fuck that guy right over there. Good. Well, that's... Good for her. Also, what a divergence in the wood that was. I know. (laughs) Two roads. And then but Katie can't get over it. She's like, I'll fucking kill myself. And they were like, no, Katie, don't. About Tom? Yeah. Everyone's like, no. And then... I can't can't talk about him. (laughs) He's a liar. I'll jump off this roof. He's a liar and a fraud. I, I'll jump right off this fucking balcony. She's, she sounds like Michael Jackson. <laughs> she does. 
I'll do it. I'll do it right now. Lies. I fell through a skylight once. Don't think I won't do it again. Um, Sandoval and Lisa meet at Tom Tom, and the pump sign hangs over Tom Tom, and Lisa walks in, and there was a guy behind her, and at first I went, "Is that me?" Yeah. <laughs> this guy looked just like me. Imagine. Um, and Lisa walks in. She goes, "Oh, just a little bit of." can't let go just yet and then sandoval walks in he sees the pump sign he goes whoa what and he walks in he goes guess that's happening he goes wish i'd been consulted about that and then lisa goes to inner confessional she goes i don't think a two percent share needs to be consulted about any sort of change and i went "Ooh, damn drag him she goes well you look better than you did last time when you were telling me you wanted to kill yourself he's like yeah she's like chef so-and-so over at pump i'm bringing them over to tom tom i was like no no keep it it's why the fuck would you do something like that does Perf- she actually think this food is good maybe you know the brits are not really known for their food their palates yeah but like that is perplexing it's very strange um lisa tom brings lavender ice cream from salt and straw i was like and Lisa goes, I'm not going to eat that. And then she goes, all right, give me some. Give me a little bite. <laughs> give me a little she sliver. Oh, it's purple. She goes, feed it to me. <laughs> and she goes, have you spoken to Rachel at all? And he goes, no, nah, man, haven't spoken to her in months. And she goes, well, I need to tell you that I've spoken to Rachel at length. And Tom, and go- Tom goes, whoa. Lisa says that Rachel told her that Tom told Rachel that life is lying lying is a way of life i believe that i believe that too she said it on the pod too Mm -hmm. and he goes i never said that i'm like no i never said that so you're lying rachel (laughs) she goes lisa goes if she talked to me she'll probably talk to you he goes she blocked me man she goes she Uh, blocked you tom and he goes yeah dude and she goes well then it's over (laughs) Love and Lisa being the bearer of bad news. She says, I think you need to move on from it. And then her confessional, she says she she talked to Rachel. And Rachel, in the call, apparently told Lisa, I don't love Tom anymore. So Lisa's like... Lisa's got the fucking tea on everything. I, I love Lisa being the bearer of like horrible news. She She's like, you? your test results came back. It's stage five uterine cancer. Well, it's over. She goes, dear... I would say things are over for you. She goes, well, start digging your grave. You'll need it. She say goodbye to your loved ones because it's over. You might want to get your affairs and knickknacks in order. She says, have you talked to your doctors? You go, no. She goes, well, I've talked to your doctors at length. I think you need to call them. <laughs> she goes, Lisa. Lisa goes, she blocked you? Well, then it's over. Then it's over. I'm like, you've never sounded so old. Damn. Um... Lisa then <laughs> she shows t- up to Lala's office and she literally is the meme of Hillary Clinton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lala basically she goes, This is where you work. She goes, "Oh, my oh God. this is a mm. And Lala's like, "Yeah, I'm in." And she goes, "This is your office?" And Lala's like, "Yeah, I have this, a conference room and like blah blah blah." And I've been in those yeah. like Many greats have been through those halls, but Lala reveals she's getting a sperm donor. And Lisa and is Lisa's weirdly thrown like thrown by that. She's like against it. She goes, she goes No, not a sperm donor. She goes, You she goes, Why do you want a sperm donor? So like well, how uncouth of a woman to do it on you know what I mean? Like she's it's very like old fashioned. And Lala goes, I don't want she goes, first of all, my daughter Ocean talked for the first time today, and like it's a miracle for me. And I know that she'd be an amazing sister. And she's just getting older. And she's like, and I don't I want to have a kid that has no connection to Russell. Or Randall, sorry. <laughs> Russell. Russell Brand. Um, yeah, I'm proud of her. I, I think, think it's, it's great. Cool. I think it's so cool. It's very modern and like she can yeah, and She's and a she great has mom. her family here and cares a lot. Like she has the infrastructure and like the desire. I'm like all for that. And the genes. Yeah. It's great. I think it's awesome. And she doesn't want to be tethered to a scrubby man. I'm freaked out by sperm donors a little bit just because you like don't I like 
picking out random sperm from like a notebook of like profiles really weirds me out because I'm just like you don't know what you're getting. Because this could be some funky spunk, Lisa. You want to go spunk? But I think it's cool. I think it's a really good solution for a lot of people. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm not against it whatsoever. I just thought Lisa's reaction was so outsized and odd. It was really odd. Also, like, I guess what does she expect Lala to do? Adopt? Lala said she would adopt, which I'm like, that's very cool, too. She had a child with a literal, a like... Demon. A demon from hell who's, like, Who abusive. she's now, like, tied to for the rest of their lives. They share a child together. She has a lot of trauma, I think, and probably has PS PTSD from it. And, like, doesn't... And, like, custody battles with someone who's, like, Rand. I mean, He's he connected. truly is, like, the one of the worst people I could ever imagine having to like deal with that kind of shit with. So I think I say power to you law. Mm -hmm. Schwartz and Joe come to Sir like a wrecking ball. Joe is finally like getting her. I'm like, this might be what, what could, will save the show. Spooky Joe revealed at last. Joe gets her own confessional now. Like she's, she's friend of, I think she's, She's in the fucking mix. I think her chaos is what we need. Yeah, I think so too. Schwartz and they're both wearing hats. Schwartz seems googly eyed over her. Their vibe together is one of my least favorite kinds of vibes to behold it's... of any. I don't know if gay couples do this as much, but no. this is like a very specific type of straightness. Yeah. Where you're, he's like, She's like the I'm so crazy girl, but like a, she's like a, a spinoff of the I'm so crazy girl. That's like the kind of girl who does like, uh, like comedy. Who's like, ooh, 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 like sound effect comedy. She's like a bro ho, a little bit. Yeah, but like with sound effects. No, she's like a sound. Of, she's like a, wah, 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 like a clown, and she's he's clown and he just core. he's like. And it, it and then he goes into like sound effect silliness yeah. and then they like they do comedy together. They riff with they wah, riff wah. Like, like it's <laughs> like they're literally they're doing like, like yeah. Like it's too much for me, but I crave it. They're she's a downright Tasmanian devil. She's a, <laughs> Katie was Katie may not be right about much. But she was correct when I she said she, <laughs> she is the energy of a crackhead. I like, and they cut to the reunion, and she goes, "Oh, Tom, no one fucking likes Joe. Joe's <laughs> fucking crazy." I was like, that made me lol so hard because Katie's Katie was right about roasted, that. She roasted both their asses, but Tom is like really into it, and he's he seems like manically happy when he's with her, and they just drink beer together. The farts? They get like dr they get like blackout together, I think, and wet the bed. That's what and I like think. And like fuck every once in a while. But like they're weird about the weirdness that they have about like fucking is so bizarre to me. He calls her Joseph. Where when someone's like, So, like, when was the last time that you guys fucked? And she's like, like covering his mouth, like Yeah. She goes, she goes <laughs> zip, zip it, <laughs> ding, throw away the key, and he goes, take it, and then he puts it under a carpet, and he goes, whoa, he goes, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and they're like, what? <laughs> they go, he sits down with Allie, who is so dark, profoundly darked out by Joe. <laughs> Allie's like, basically, like, I won't even dignify these people. Like, she's basically like, mute. like this. James is like, back, and he's like, in, he's under the spell again of Sandoval. And, he and goes, he's back in like the DJ booth, so he's feeling good. Yeah, and he's like, oh, he's laughing out, and they're both, they're both. He goes, oh, you guys are so funny together. I love your vibe. And they're just like in, wearing their hats, and James he goes, is stoned. Like, you have to be so fucking high to like oh, where, where? to get a kick out of two trucker hat straights going. Wee, woo, wee, woo. But I've been there before, so this guy will be like, she is the funniest girl I've ever <laughs> met. And then you meet her, and she's like doing mime work. She's and you're like, like this. And you're like just making like making those faces are like Yeah, and you're just like, oh You're like, kill me <laughs> now. It's like the just Gen Z making fun of millennial cringe videos mm -hmm. where they're like, My Splorlax is over here. <laughs> no, the gowls of Gahool have you know, it's like that they do that are they kind like of shit. Mustache yeah. Finger. <laughs> 
<laughs> She's I'm also dead. how old is she? I don't know. They're weird. To get, they're bizarre. And and he goes, Allie, meet Joe. Joseph is a badass hairstylist from Wisconsin. <laughs> and Allie goes, <laughs> Allie goes, nice to meet you. <laughs> Old spooky Joe. Sandoval sits down. He's like, hey, everyone. He well, no. First, they spot him, and Joe goes, oh, she goes, Sandy's here. And then she goes, yay. And I was like, oh, God. Joe is a clown at a children's birthday party. I expect her to, like, pull out, like, balloons and start making balloon animals. She goes, oh, oh. She's Pennywise. She goes, whoa. <laughs> she goes, Sandoval's here. She goes, oh. Let me fish him over. <laughs> and then she goes, Sandoval, think fast. And then Sandoval goes, and she goes, whoa, whoa. She's Mickey Mouse. She's <laughs> Literally. She is positively born of the Magic Kingdom. She's truly the big glove, white glove hand. She's Mickey Mouse. She literally is Steamboat Willie, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> going, <laughs> she goes, oh, oh Sandoval, over here. I'm so happy. He's back, everyone. Yay! And Allie's just like, and Sandoval goes, uh-huh, or Schwartz goes, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> fucking crazy. This is the kind of girl he needs to be with who just like is down to drink beer. And like, and if he throws a beer on her, she'll like it. Yeah, they could throw beer on each other. They could use beer as lube. It's straight hell. It is straight hell. And this is also the kind of straight hell where, like, two guys are like, she's so fucking hilarious. She's fucking, she's fucking hilarious. And you're like, no. And you're like, she's, she's unwell. Literally a, a grown-up clown. <laughs> she's, she's she's a child's mouth. birthday party clown. But worse. She's not talented. An untalented clown. Joseph is a badass hairstylist from Wisconsin. I love Allie. And then Sandoval comes over and he goes, what's up, everyone? He goes, hey, uh, James, try these on. And he hands him a pair of, like, women's sunglasses. And James tries on, like, an oversized female sunglasses. He goes, oh, mate, these look sick. I was like. And, and Joe goes, oh, you look like Elton John. <laughs> and Allie's like. Allie's like, wow, seems like Sandoval's trying to win James back with gifts. And I go, that's what he does. Yeah, and he goes, I literally was like, these, I was like, he's going to be like, you can have them. Like, I knew exactly how he was going to, like, his, the build up to him being like, you can have them. I knew in my head, I was like, he was just going to say it exactly like that. And then sure enough, he did. And then. And Joe goes, oh, eh, oh, eh, just, oh, oh, I can't see. I can't see. What? What? She goes, you know, it's kind of weird when the sun comes out and you go, oh, there's the sun. I can't see it. And then you put on sunglasses and they go, what? <laughs> and Schwartz is like, <laughs> she goes, and then all of a sudden you're like, no, I can't even see anything. So I have to put it back up. But then the sun's there. So I have to put it back again. And then nothing's there. And then, sun's there. And then Allie's just like this. Then the worst thing I've ever seen happens what where a waiter comes and sets down three plates of crudo <laughs> for them <laughs> and i'm not them ordering crudo appetizer from i was like you did not do that that was a true what in tarnation right? nice wait and then it cuts to the next day and they I- ordered raw Sushi grade fish at Sir. At Sir, they're nasty people. Their stomachs are so desensitized. They have parasites now. No, they have so many. Well, they all have parasites, but they are literally going to be sleeping at night in their bed and feel an itch in their butthole, and a worm will come out. <gasps> but then it cuts to the next day, and Tom and Joe are at that Firestone place, I think, slinging beers. Yeah, and he goes, "Oh, you were a goat cheese ball thief last night," and Joe goes, "No." She goes, whoop, whoop, she goes, she goes whoop. they were there, and then they weren't there. Whoop, whoop, <laughs> She goes, boo, 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 ping pong show, go to your balls. Put it in my mouth. This is when I fully identified them as, like, clown humor, noise humor 
And Tom's yeah. like, are we going to ever just be together one day? And she's like, okay, so. She thinks he likes her and he's like, no, nah, definitely nothing there. Yeah, this is where I'm like weirded out because they talk about how they slept together maybe like a month ago was the final time, which I think maybe it is more like a couple weeks ago or, or maybe even last, like night. last night. Yeah. And like or if they don't sleep together, it's because he has whiskey dick and like they just cuddle. But they do clown stuff. They do clown. They just like do <laughs> noises balloons. until Joe comes. I truly think that she could just climax off of like clown laughter. So she says that it seems like she was into it, but Schwartz shut it down saying that he needs two to three years to process the divorce. Uh huh. And Joe goes, okay, so 43. And he goes, 43, more like 47. I go, wait, how old is Schwartz? He's like 40 or 41. Okay. And then he's like, we don't know what's going to happen with AI yet. And I was like, he actually probably is waiting for just like an AI bot girlfriend. Joe made me kind of feel empathy for Joe. But then Joe... Seemingly moved in pretty immediately after. So, like, were they having, like, an emotional affair? I don't know. It's so bizarre. How did she... She knew Kristen? She, I think, was friends with Dodie. So, she was sort of, like... She was hanging on the fringes and and then fringed her way into his, like, sad bachelor apartment. And then, I don't know. I need them to just be open and honest about the nature of their relationship I want to hear Joe's take because she was definitely like double dating with Rachel and Sandy. Yeah. They were seen at shows together. Like, so Joe traveling. probably knew about the affair. Oh, yeah. Too. There were pictures of Rachel and Joe like together at like a show in another state, like in the balcony, like going like Gwen, like we're the wives. The plot fucking thickens. So I want to hear Joe's tea. Yeah. If she can enunciate. So the girls... Allie hosts an astrology night, and the boys have a rat pack night at <laughs> at a grill. At a grill, but the girl Allie has all the galleys over because she at once wanted to be a country singer, and then it shows a clip of her, and she's actually really good. She was cute, and then she said, "I gave up on those dreams and became an astrologist." Fair. Respect. Um, meanwhile, at boys' night, the Rat Pack assembles. Brock, Schwartz, Oof, Sandy. Fuck me, Brock. Brock is so hot. He's hot. I, I, I'm i like, I'm a little, I don't trust him. I know he's probably really. I, I, I don't, but I want to. I do, actually. Until do? he proves otherwise, I trust him. I'm on the fence, but he is really hot. Yeah. And Sandoval and James. Sandoval's wearing a white tux, white dinner jacket. I was like. And Kennedy just wants a big brother. He needs guidance from an elder. He like missed Tom a lot, I think. Yeah. And like looked up to him. And now he kind of is like, where do I go from here? He's Tom's really, he's very charming. Um, Allie does not spend enough time on these women's charts for my liking. She tries. I wanted to know, like, I would do a spinoff episode that's just, like, the ent- entire chart reading of each of these women. Also, the waitress at Boys Night, I was like, whoops. <laughs> whoops, is she? I believe that she doesn't know about Scandaval. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't even know what rock she came under. She's, like, part turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Allie goes, Lala, you literally have so much fucking Pluto in your house. It's crazy. That's kind of a bad thing, I think. That's like death, destruction, loss, maybe. Lala goes, you think? <laughs> and then Katie. She goes, Katie, you are you have a lot of lives. And Katie goes, this isn't my first lifetime. Well, Katie, suddenly she gets kind of like, I think she's a little tipsy. And she goes, yeah, she goes, yeah, I'm on my, one of my last fucking lives. Like, she's <laughs> she's like an old hat. I was like, yeah, I'd say you've got nine lives. She was in my past lives. I've been male. She was. That's why it's hard for me to step into my feminine energy. And I was like, all right. She was. And so what in her confessional, she goes, so why it seems like I have big dick energy is because in a past life I had a big dick. Okay. I see it. Yeah. She was on my last fucking life. (laughs) (laughs) 
God, in every life she's had, she's been with Schwartz. I know. They're like connected. I want, I want this drama. Like, I want drama between her and Joe and Schwartz. Same. I need a fight. I need to, like, see glasses thrown and, like, threats being made. Allie goes to Ariana. Ariana, I know things seem really bad right now. And Ariana goes, yeah. I was like, bad? Bad? She's making so much fucking money. You just peddled. You got a book deal. You're going to glad. It's a kitty litter. <laughs> Battery deal? You're getting six figures. Ariana goes, I know everyone thinks that I have millions of dollars now, but I don't. She goes, when Scannaval hit... I was in deep money problems and like a week before I had to call my agent and manager and I was like, guys, what are we doing? And I was like, been there. She and said then- she was on her last 2K on March 1st. That's so grim. Yeah. Fully been there. I get it. I, I, I really respect her like hustling the fuck out of this. I do too. Cause you got to grab like once you've grabbed that grab bag like, with the money, but it's right there. Once you've experienced like the being on your last like 1500 and being like, I literally have no income on the horizon. Few things are worse than that realization. And you better pray. Like if only in my darkest days, a scandal had hit. And I just had hit the fucking jackpot, but it doesn't really pan out like that for many people. You better She's experienced like a true once in a, like once in mm-hmm. a, one in a million people experience, I maybe even more, one in like oh. 600 million people experience what she experienced. In yeah, it's moment. very, very rare. Um, she, she sank all her money into that damn sandwich shop. And then she goes... Um, Lala and then Lala and Katie start exchanging words. Well, Lala says something. Also, it's like very much an LA thing too of like these people are making like six figures a year to do this reality show. But like that doesn't take you that far in Los Angeles. Like it's easy to spend that money with like a mortgage and like the upkeep of a house you better pray that you get a brand sponsorship with Lay's in order. That's the only way you can afford to be in LA. Is yeah. If you have a brand sponsorship. If Lay's comes correct and is like, we love you, girl. Like, that's the. You, if like, literally Kitty Litter is like, want to be our spokesperson, you're like, hell yeah. That's You better take it and run because the only way you can live in this goddamn town is if you have like multiple people banging down your door to like be sponsors. I know. James goes. This is a gentleman's dinner. <laughs> and then they talk about like Raquel. I kind of fugued during this part. I was like, you guys are boring me. Where's Joe? I know. Joe. <laughs> she comes. She's dressed as a mime. She <laughs> she pulls up like a fake seat and sits down and is like. <laughs> she, pulls, <laughs> she pulls up in like a jalopy outside. <laughs> it's a clown car drops yeah. her off. Um, Katie is <laughs> Betty Hill. <laughs> Katie is a little, she's a little toasted, and she goes. Lala says something or the other, and then Katie, like, Katie, truly is the only thing she cares about is her sandwich future. She turns immediately to Ariana and, like, makes fun of Lala. And I was like, you're shitty for that. And Lala's like, don't do that. I'm also like, Katie, you fight like a middle schooler. That's She's always done that. She truly has, like, the emotional IQ of, like, a seventh grade girl. When someone, if you're having, like, a disagreement with someone and they turn to someone else who you're also friends with and go, like, Ugh. Or they oh go, like, God. I would l- nothing. I that is like no. Lala actually handled that pretty gracefully because I would lose my shit. Yeah, I'd be like, "Fuck you." Mm-hmm. I'm That's right here. That's so childish yeah. and like bizarre and antisocial, and like if I was Ariana and my literal business partner who had like vested interest in a business venture did that to me, I'd be like, why am I in business with this person? You'd say it's curtains for you. Yeah. I'd be like, no more sandwiches. I'm <laughs> packing up the lays and hitting the road. But yeah, it's just like Katie fights dirty. 
sandwiches are all she has and she's working hard to protect that sandwich relationship it's very christina kelly to do that the mayo depends on it you know what i mean to be like like she did that a lot with raquel Mm -hmm. and lala's like don't fucking do little "Mm -hmm." and she's like don't put your fingers in my face she goes don't you raise your voice at me bitch She calls her bitch. I know. I was like, you've bitch. escalated this. What the Whoa. fuck? But I was like, I love it. I know. I was like, you're fucking trash, but keep going. I know. It's funny. Like, I want them to do this, but when they do it now, I'm like, oh, you guys are, you're classier than this. I want them to be better, but I crave them to be as horrible as humanly possible. It's truly the Vanderpump Rules hero's dilemma is like, as a viewer, I need them to be better than they are, but ultimately I need them to to humiliate themselves don't you raise your voice at me bitch (laughs) she's literally like counting pickles before she goes to sleep at night she's like if i can just keep this relationship up and we'll open something about her my future will be locked in she literally is like sandwiches are all she has she goes i sleep every night i sleep (laughs) every night i sleep at night she every sleeps night. in the back of the <laughs> she sleeps every night she sleeps She sleeps in a walk in oven. She goes, every night I sleep with one sheet of one sheet of salami under my pillow. <laughs> and I in hopes that the next day the sandwich fairy came. Why she said now Whitney Rose. Which makes sense because they're both from Utah. Utah. Yeah. She goes, she, Every night I pray to God and I s- every night she I goes, sleep with the shoot out under my pillow. Every night I make my bed like I would make a sandwich. Fluffy on the bottom. Thin layers in the middle, me the meat, thin layers on top like lettuce, and a fluffy duvet like bun, and I put a tiny piece of prosciutto under my pillow, and then I count pickles before I go into slumber. And she goes, in my dreams I slice tomatoes. She goes, I smell the loaves baking. She's so close. She's so close to sandwich life. She can taste it. She She goes, I wake up to the smell of bread cooking, but it's just a dream. A little more loyalty to Ariana to get the sandwich store off the ground. <laughs> she goes, she, <laughs> she goes, <laughs> Chef Penny. She goes, in my dream, Chef Penny calls me and tells me we're sold out. We're sold out of ham sandwiches. And I say, we've done it. She goes, <laughs> bitch. She goes, bitch, do not come. Pr- do not become between me and my sandwiches, bitch. <laughs> you know nothing. You know nothing of what it is to be a sandwicher. She's fighting tooth and nail for her sandwich future. That's a true. It's Game of Sandwiches with her. <laughs> <laughs> game of Salami. It is Game of Cold Cuts <laughs> with the Maloney. <laughs> because she, every day she wakes up and she's like, what do Katie I have to Bologna. do? Katie Baloney, indeed. She says, what do I have to do today? She looks in the mirror and she thinks about everything she has to do to lock in her sandwich dreams. And she fucking acts ex- all her choices. It's kind of admirable. Every choice she makes are in line with a future of sandwiches. Her vanity plate says <laughs> sandwich. Sandwich queen. <laughs> Don't come between me and my... Do not come between me and my ciabatta, bitch. <laughs> it's mayo or nothing, bitch. <laughs> it's mayo and mustard, bitch. It's mayo and mustard, bitch. Who decide who you are? Mayo or mustard? You don't want to be mayo. <laughs> and Lala, uh, Lala goes, what? She goes, <laughs> she goes, ciabatta. She goes, what? She goes, focaccia. Katie, like, literally, <laughs> I felt like if Chibata. the tide, if she feels like the tides are turning, I see her, like, being like, I have to go to the bathroom real <laughs> quick. And then it goes to the bathroom and just, like, stares in the mirror with, like, a single tear streaming down her face. And she, like, hypes her. She's like, You're going to lose it all. You're going to lose, lose everything. You haven't come this you far. Be, you better you be haven't come this far room. to lose the lobes. She goes, Nothing will take the lobes from you. She goes, get back out there. Be strong and get those lobes, Maloney. And she goes, <laughs> <"Lobes>? <laughs> she goes, I'll do whatever it takes. And then she get, freshens up and comes back out and gets ready to fight on Ariana's behalf. Yeah. Because it's truly the only way her mustard future will be secure. Jabata. Forgot you. Whole wheat. She goes, do not. She goes, if you're going to, sp- she goes, if you're going to, if you're going to act like that, you might as well take the crust off the sandwich, bitch. <laughs> And Lala goes, what? <laughs> she only speaks in sandwich euphemism. Yeah. She goes, 
Well, that's what they call that's what they call a half sandwich. Sounds like you're a little peanut butter and jelly bitch. <laughs> well, I was like, excuse you? She goes, that's what I call a ham sandwich, bitch. Ham and cheese, nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> she, goes, she goes, okay, potato bread, bitch. <laughs> Man. We needed Maloney. Like, to act- I she trade me this. activated a little. Trade, trade me, me is activated, but trade me has just become securing the sandwich future. I must secure the sandwich up. It is only sandwiches from here on out. All I have are the loaves. All I have is the meat, tomatoes, lettuce, tomatoes, all I lettuce. can see. Tomatoes, when lettuce. I drive by a subway, I want to scream, it could be mine. A sandwich empire, one shop, there's something about her. I will activate and I will get those sandwiches no matter the cost. My allegiance is to one, and she that was, is my sandwich queen. She was, I will begin to bathe in honey mustard, honey Dijon, yellow mustard. Chicken salad. Tuna Thousand salad. Island. <laughs> egg salad. Gosha. Maybe a deviled egg. Risotto. Risotto. It'll be a deli. A side of mac and It'll cheese. It'll be a deli maybe. by the time I'm done with it. <laughs> it's this one sandwich shop or nothing. She goes, <laughs> she goes, as long as I live till the day I die, I will bring this sandwich shop into the world. I was put on this earth for one thing and one <laughs> thing only to make sandwiches. I will put on this earth to do one thing and one thing only to open a fucking sandwich shop and have Chef Penny guide me into the light. <laughs> chef Penny, may you to work as a sous chef. Bestow your wisdom on me, Chef Penny. Chef Penny, yes, chef. Yes, chef. <laughs> yes, chef. <laughs> she goes, if I have to, she goes, I will defend Ariana to the death. I will kill for her if it means partnering in the sandwich shop. If it she- allows me one chance to slide a butter knife with mayo across a piece of crusty focaccia. I will, I will do whatever it takes. I will spill blood. <laughs> blood. Blood will run in the streets. It's all for the sandwiches. And it just ends with Allie going, well, this was successful. Allie goes, the, that's the thing about astrology is everyone's different. And that's what it shows us. So you might think one thing and then someone thinks something else and we're different. And isn't that amazing? And they're like, Katie's like, fuck you. <laughs> Give me an onion roll now. Fuck you. Where's your potato bread? She goes, I have some, I have some yeast to secure. <laughs> sourdough starter fuck yourself <laughs> <laughs> i hope it works out for maloney me too just put it all on red aka sandwiches let's trade us some cult members yeah trade me trade me bitch <laughs> makeup fuck. fresh fucking bitch <laughs> makeup fresh denise jeanette bruce Denise it up, Bruce. Rachel in Dublin. Rachel in Dublin. Gina Sapienza. Gina Sapienza. That's an Italian That's sub. An Italian I know that name. It. Sarah Elizabeth. Sarah Elizabeth. Sarah Beth's a brunch spot where they sell tea sandwiches. Lucy from London. Lucy from fucking London. Claridge's. Brooke Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. Rachel Knight. Rachel McAdams. Brittany Ryan Weiss. Brittany Spears. This is all the people that Katie thinks are going to come into the doors <laughs> yeah. of her sandwich emporium. Yeah. Danielle McMillan. Danielle McMillan. Bridget Wachowski. Bridget, Bridget Wowski, Monaghan. Wasowski. The Wachowski sisters. Lady Swamp, which gives, gives no, no fucks. fucks. Jessica Hernandez. Jessica Biel. Lazara. Lazara. Isn't Mom. there a designer called Lazara? Keep going. Joseph Altazara. Malzatov. Mal- Molly Ringwald. Mary. <laughs> Mary. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. <laughs> Mike Mary Earhart Mike, Mike Sh- Earhart Sharon Baum Realtor Fucking Sharon The queen of the world Timothy Shield Timothy Chalamet Sonia Morgan on Mushrooms Sonia Morgan on Mushrooms Matthew Thomas Matthew McConaughey McConaughey Owsley Robinson Owls of Gahul Mariah Carey Mariah Carey Kathy West Diane Weist Rochelle Martino Rochelle Martino Kit Moore Kit Moore Hillary Hillary Clinton. Orlando Orlando Patron of the farts. Patron of the fucking farts. Nick Sedaris. Sedaris. Emily. Emily. Kim Lucas. Kim Lucas. Jeffrey Pratima. 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 All are welcome to my sandwich. All are Emporium. welcome. Come on. Come all. Split the sandwich. One or two. Guys, thank you so much for Guys. putting up with us. And we'll see you in Berkeley this weekend. We're so excited. Saturday night. Big Saturday night. Send us luck for Shea Panisgate. Bye. Bye. Bye.